Hello? Yeah, one minute. <laughs> so what all are the Azure resources you are familiar with mm. the most? Yeah, sure. So again, AWS like uh, VPC and EC2, IAM, uh, S3, AWS organization, and Cloud uh, CloudWatch, and uh, S3. Oh, I'm talking about Azure. Sorry. Azure. 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 Azure I'm Azure. talking about Azure. Okay. When you come to Azure, I have a good experience like uh, we virtual machine, and uh, VNet load balancer, and Azure Application Gateway, and CDN and Traffic Manager, and Azure Scale Set, and Azure Availability Set. Uh, Azure uh, Recovery Service Vault and how to take a backup from uh, Azure on premise by using Mars Agent and uh, that and all. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, consider you have a requirement to host a web application, so in Azure. So, how, what are resources you will use and how do you configure it? Okay, so like, uh, so can I take AWS or Azure? Because actually, more comfortable with AWS, that's what. Uh, Okay. Like uh, when it comes to the application, actually we have a lot of compute options. So for example, EC2 machine, that's a virtual private server. So we can host any application over them. So we have to convert that virtual private server into a like a web server or like application server. We have to do that. Or else we can go to microservice part like EKS, ECS. And uh, so again, so they have, we have a two, uh, like a bifurcation in between. Like uh, we have a Fargate and we have EC2. So that we can use, or else we can use serverless computing like uh, Lambda. Or else we can go to Elastic Beanstalk, like a patch service, or we don't need to manage any infrastructure, entirely managing AWS, like a patching and all activity. And we can do like uh, deployment without any uh, downtime as well, by, by using like a blue-green deployment, like that strategy we can use over there. And we have a light sale, light sale is a, like another type of a, a, like computing, like, uh, so for example, our organization is a very small and actually we need to predict the uh, like expense and all, so we can use light sale over there. So it's like depending upon the uh, like requirement. So what is the client requirement and what is the availability of the application? So based upon that, actually we have to choose the computer. Mm -hmm. So if you want to uh, deploy an application, like a uh, kind of static web content, mm -hmm. so which resource you will use and which, how where you enable that? Okay. So like for a static application, see, uh, so we have an option like in S3 bucket, so we can host that application on S3 bucket. So we have a like a web static content, like uh, we can host any application over there. So later, if you want to like distribute that content all over the world, so we can uh, like uh, bind with the uh, AWS CloudFront or else Azure CDN we can use over there. And that is going to uh, propagate uh, this content all over the world by the help of edge locations. So later we can use Azure DNS or AWS DNS or like a Cloudflare. So we can create a CNAME over there and we can integrate our domain name. So the user can access to this domain name and this will be routed to our CloudFront and uh, like uh, they will be able to access the nearby location. So when you come to EC2 machine, so same as uh, we can create any web server, for example, uh, Nginx, Tomcat or IAS or else uh, any application servers like WebLogic, GlassFish or any kind of application, for example, Python Flask application. So we can host our application by default, for example, when we installing like Apache server on our uh, like a virtual machine, so we will be have a default directory slash var slash, uh, sorry, slash var www.html. In that particular directory, we have to keep our static application. So we have to go to route 53 or else we have to go to any other third party DNS, then we have to add the like a pub, uh, virtual machine public API address over here. So if you have any proxy servers, we can add the proxy server information over there. Or if you have any load balancer, so we can connect the load balancer with our fleet of instances, then we can add our load balancer in our alias in route 53 or any other third party cloud flare wherever it is. So later the user can access our uh, load balancer. So the user cannot access the exact IP address of virtual machine because virtual machine will be keeping as a private only. So we don't have any public IP address. So the user can only can access our load balancer. A load balancer will be have a custom domain name, for example, www.siemens.com. Like we can do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, what all are the deployment strategies you are aware? Uh, like uh, we have a blue green deployment and we have a canary deployment and when it come to these like kubernetes microservice part we have a rolling update we have a recreate like that and all i know where mm -hmm. so consider your your project is using function app or app service uh, how do you implement this blue green deployment uh sorry ma'am 
so uh, consider your project is using function app okay function apps like same as lambda app. lambda yeah yeah so how do you implement the zero downtime deployment there so like uh, so we can create uh, so if it is a blue green deployment so we can create the same infrastructure beside so then after once we done the testing and all like the second version then we can change our dns name to our uh, second function app so that we can do so that is basically we doing in blue green deployment mm mm-hmm. mm mm-hmm. mm-hmm. like if anything happened for example version 2 is impaired or like as we uh, as we predicted it's not working then again we can change our like dns redirection to our uh, like a version 1 so that we can do it something happen cause so where do you build the docker images and the store it okay so docker images like uh, so if you have a linux machine we can do that if you have a windows machine we can install over there as well so we only require one hypervisor docker or cry or cricket like that kind of container and type so we can store like uh, either we can use like any uh, like a cloud provider for example ecr we can use like azure uh, like uh, uh, azure container container registry we can use or else we can use like a uh, uh, docker hub we can use or else docker registry we can use like a private registry we can download the docker registry image then we can uh, keep in private or else we can use nessus or jfrog so uh, how do you how do you scan the image just scan or sign the images before you push the image uh, to container registry like uh, so in docker itself we have an option so for that uh, so we have to do, we have to go to docker up so there there itself we can do that we need to append some uh, some url in our docker up itself or else in, in our company actually we using like uh, ecr so in ecr itself we have an option like we can scan image and we can find whether it's a critical or low medium so we using to uh, like execute some kind of like uh, aws commands or aws cli commands so we can execute the command and that that is going to print whether our image is a critical or like what is the uh, like a vulnerability uh, stage so that we can find it out after we can write a shell script and we can find out the exact word if it is a critical we can delete the image and we can let them know like the developers and developer again they will recreate and again the stuff will be flow like it building and again will be go to the testing stage and again it will go to the uh, scanner stage so that we can do that so if it is a medium or like a below medium then we can uh, consider is a deployment or else not vulnerable so if it is above medium or like vulnerable uh, critical then we can delete the image so we should not go ahead yeah uh, so when it comes to sonar cube how do you integrate with build a pipeline so which task you will specifically use to integrate sonar cube okay So like uh, sonar cube like uh, i don't have any real time experience on it but basically sonar cube we used to find out the code complexity and as well as bugs and vulnerabilities so that we can find it out so mainly we have a uh, two attributes over there one is a profile gateway another one is a sonar uh, sonar gateway i think so so in profile gateway so what so in profile actually what we can do here we will be have uh, some default rules for example c hash and java so for uh, python so we have uh, some default rule so what we can do here what other rule we required so we can either create a custom rules or else or what are the inbuilt rule we have so that we can add to our uh, new project when i come to this uh, gateway gateway part like sonar gateway profile gateway so so that is basically have some conditions for example if the code coverage is below 80% or so the code coverage is below 70% so we can make it disable the project or we can make it unstable the project so like uh, we will be have a web book over there and we can uh, take our jenkins uh, like uh, the result to our jenkins again and we can analyze the code and uh, so as whatever actually we define for example so we just defined in uh, like a docker sorry in jenkins so if the code is not covered like uh, above 80 percentage so we need to unstable and we need to again recreate it we need to let them know let developers so that we can do it so we can uh, download so we can download the uh, like a sonar cube from uh, like a sonar cube uh, official documentation so we need a java for that so that and all right so consider your cube when it is in a private network where you where the where it is not accessible publicly so how do you deploy the code to kubernetes or the images to kubernetes okay so there are using which machine okay there we need to create a private connection so we will be have a peering connection or else see uh, in some situation maybe the subnet actually that will be in a different on premise okay so at that time we have to create a vpn connection between so if it is a private definitely we can auto access through public uh, ip address so we have to create a private channel so in azure we have a option vnet peering or else in when when it come to aws we can use like a uh, uh, peering connection or transit key we can use over there Mm-hmm. Or else, if it is the same, no, no, no. When when you deploy the image in Azure DevOps, which agent you will use? 
okay that's what i'd like in you I cannot directly use azure devops pipeline right because pipeline will not no pipeline agents will not know uh, which private network this kubernetes is so which machine you will use like uh, so that's what i'm telling in azure actually i have a very less exposure so mostly i'm doing like uh, aws so if i'm getting any opportunity i can okay, in aws no 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 in aws in aws consider you have some whatever it is kubernetes or eks or whatever it is so it's in private and how do you deploy the same method we will lose so definitely see if it is the same vpc we will be have a private connection we can use the private ip it does not at all issue so we can use let's say cp command to copy that whatever the entire manifest over like a given as master node then we can apply over there mm. Mm. that is fine but when it comes to deployment you will create some pipelines mm. some release pipelines at all you will create no mm. in jenkins i'm not sure what language what word you will use uh-huh. some pipelines uh-huh. so in the pipelines which machine you will use to deploy those uh which means which machine which machine agent machine agent machine in the sense like how i'm deploying that application like that yes uh, yes yes see like uh, see actually we we, uh, we have a cluster in eks so whatever the artifact actually be getting into jenkins by from jenkins actually be copying the data into our eks cluster so then after we using some how you will copy how you will copy so we can use this copy using which machine SCP command we can use over there, and we using Ubuntu systems over there. Ubuntu system as in which network? Uh, network in the sense like uh, should I tell the IP address or? No 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 no. So Kubernetes is also in a private network. Huh. Will you create the same um, s- same? Will you create any machine in the same private network so that it talks each other or how it is? No, not like that. See, uh, mainly actually we have a two VPC. Like uh, for production, actually we have a different VPC. Okay, so rest whatever the thing actually we doing, so that is now a different VPC. For example, so when it come to other VPC, actually we have one more VPC for centralized security. So actually, I'm not getting actually what you expecting from that. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, leave it, leave it, leave it. Hmm. So t- total, how much years of experience y- you have? Total 3.1 year experience in when it come to AWS and Azure recently started and uh, when it come mm-hmm. to Kubernetes and Docker and uh, this DevOps part I have 1.5 year experience. Mhm. Mhm. <coughs> Give me a minute. Sure, sure, please. I have you heard of front door? What is front door? Why it is used? Sorry. Front door. In Azure, right? Have you heard of front door service? Yeah. Azure itself. Hmm. Uh, I'm not remembering. I think CD and it's called as a front door, like a cloud front, content delivery network. So what is the difference between CDN and front door? Oh, that I'm. I, I don't know. I don't know that. Hmm. Have you worked in APIM API management service? In AWS, I created some load balancer by using uh, API Gateway, and uh, so whatever the content we have in our Dynamo DB, so that I get by using API Gateway. I created API Gateway for that. Have you worked on Logic App? Why Logic App is used? Mm. No, no. Because I Have think you, you only ask him from uh, you only ask him from like uh, Azure, I think so, right? Azure actually have a less exposure when it comes to Azure. Okay. Okay. What all scripting languages you are aware of? Like Python and Bash. PowerShell. Sorry. PowerShell. PowerShell, I don't know. Uh, ARM. 
No, I don't know. Terraform. Terraform. Why, Terraform. Mhm. So what is the benefit of using Terraform? Terraform basically is infrastructure as a code. So uh, instead of creating infrastructure manually, so we can write some code and we can create infrastructure. So consider a scenario. So we need to create an infrastructure. So we'll be have a like a multi. We need to implement that same infrastructure in a multiple environment, production, pre-production. So maybe in other project as well. So we created that infrastructure manually. So again, we have to create in like a different different environment. so that would be created be difficult and as well as if it is a human so definitely they will bound to make a mistake as well so here we can use infrastructure as a code and within a minute or within an hour we can create an entire infrastructure and it's supporting like it's agnostic platform it's supporting like a lot of cloud platform monitoring tools and uh, almost everything kubernetes everything it's supporting that's what it's more convenient that's what so uh, okay okay so which company you currently working in 6d technologies where it is btm bangalore itself bangalore itself okay this is your first company hmm first company first company okay you are from which sort uh, of you native Basically, I'm from Kerala, but now I'm well settled in Bangalore, Whitefield. Okay, okay. Okay, then we'll get back to you, uh, Shik. Mm, no, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, bye, bye. Thank you. Thank mm-hmm. you.